In this video, we're going to learn how to create an angle that's congruent to a given angle, and then using that, we're going to learn how to construct parallel lines. So the first thing here is we're going to copy this angle. So basically, we're going to construct an angle that's congruent to it. So when you start this out, you have to figure out, well, where do you want your angle to start? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to construct a ray. So I'm going to have a point on one side and then an arrow on the other. So this is where I'm going to start my angle. And you can place it wherever you want. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your compass and we're going to go over to the given angle and open the compass. Um, it doesn't really matter the distance that you open it, but usually I try somewhere kind of like in the middle. Um, something that's convenient to you. So not too big, not too small. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark an arc. So you're going to mark an arc right on your angle. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that right over here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that arc. This arc is used to be able to tell us where we're going to measure our angle. Because if you think right now about um, copying this angle, I need to know how many degrees it has. But when we're using a compass, we can't measure degrees. We don't know the number. So that means I have to use a different way to figure out what's the opening, how many degrees are in this angle. So right now, if I were just to take my straight edge and go ahead and draw um, a ray, that would not be an accurate construction of how far open this angle actually is or the measure of this angle. So what we have to do is we use this first arc as a way to measure or as um, points to be able to use to measure the opening of this angle. So what I need to do is I need to take my compass and I need to measure the opening from those intersection points of that arc. So that whole purpose of that first arc is just so that I know where to measure on my angle so that I'm measuring both angles in the same position. Because otherwise I could be measuring this angle in one spot and then when I go to transfer it's in a different location. So I'm measuring the opening because remember we don't have any numbers here. So we're measuring this and to represent that I'm measuring it, I'm marking it with a blue arc. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to slide it over to the angle that I'm creating. And I'm putting the metal point in the same position and then I'm going to go ahead and mark that blue arc. So again, the whole purpose of the purple arc is so that I know where to place my compass to be able to measure the opening or the degree of the angle. So now with my blue arc, I have an intersection. And now that tells me when I take my straight edge, it tells me where to measure or where to um, draw my ray. Because if we didn't have that intersection, I wouldn't know where exactly to stop this um, ray. I don't know where to make it go through. So in this case, now I've copied this angle because I've guaranteed that the opening is the same because I measured the opening in the same spot on both angles. So this angle is congruent to this original angle BAC. So really this should say BAC. Um, so I can go ahead and mark those as congruent. So let's go ahead and try another one. So this one will look a little bit different because it's obtuse. So let's start with where do we want our new angle to go. So wherever you have space, so I'm going to just kind of put mine down here. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a horizontal line. And then I'm going to take my compass. And remember, the first step is to measure um, or to draw an arc through both angles, or um, the original angle and then where you want your new angle to go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an arc. Go down here. I'm going to copy that arc. And this is telling me my measuring points, where I want to measure from. So now when I go up to this angle, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to measure from point to point the opening. Because this is telling me, this is how I'm measuring the degree of my angle. I'm going to use a different color just to represent that that's a different arc. And now I know that that's the width that my compass should be to copy the angle down here. I'm going to go here, mark that, and now I have an intersection point. So now when I go to draw in the other ray of my angle, I know that it has to go through that intersection point. And you should see that both of these angles are looking like they have the same measure because they are congruent. So I can go ahead and 
mark those with arcs represent that they're congruent. So then now that we know how to copy angles or create congruent angles, now we're going to look at how to construct parallel lines. So in order to construct parallel lines, the easiest construction um, that I found is if we basically create congruent corresponding angles. So if you imagine, here's my two parallel lines, here's my transversal. If I have congruent corresponding angles, so meaning if these angles right here are congruent, that's going to force these lines to be parallel. So what we're going to actually do for this construction is we're going to construct congruent corresponding angles, and that will imply that the lines are parallel. Since we know how to copy angles, I'm going to copy angles in the corresponding position. Now, really, you could copy any set of um, special angles that would form parallel lines. So I could copy alternate exterior angles. I could copy um, alternate interior angles anything that would imply parallel lines. Now the corresponding seems to be the easiest for the construction, so that's typically why we do corresponding as our congruent angles to get our parallel lines. So for this construction, um, we're going to get congruent corresponding angles, which will imply those parallel lines. So that's our goal here. So you're going to copy corresponding angles. So copy um, corresponding angles. That's the construction. So what I'm going to do is I need to, here's my line, PQ, I need to draw a line that's parallel passing through R. So the first thing I need is I need a transversal. I can't draw a parallel line right now because you would be eyeballing it and saying, oh, those look parallel. You actually have to have those congruent corresponding angles first and that's how we're going to get our parallel lines. So I'm going to start with a transversal. My transversal doesn't really matter the angle, so as long as it passes through R, so meaning um, you can move this around at any angle as long as it goes through R. So your transversal is just a line that's going to intersect our two parallel lines, so I'm going to end up with a parallel line here. I have PQ. This is my transversal. So by drawing that transversal in, see how I've just created an angle down here? So I have this angle right here. What I want to do is I want to copy that angle. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our construction that we just talked about. We're going to copy that angle, but we're going to copy it up top here so that it's corresponding and congruent. And remember, you could copy a, you know, this angle so that you find the alternate interior angle as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this angle. I'm going to draw an arc. And then I'm going to go up top because my congruent corresponding angle is going to have a vertex of R. So I'm just going to copy that. And then we need to measure the opening of this angle. So I'm going to take my compass. And remember, the whole point of that first arc is so that we know um, the opening of where, so we know where to measure the opening of our angle. So I'm going to mark that. And then up top here, I'm placing the metal point on the transversal, not over here because I don't know where to place the metal point. So I'm placing the metal point on the transversal, and then I'm doing my arc right here. That tells me where the bottom of my angle has to go. So that actually tells me where my parallel line would be. Because now what I've done is I've passed through point R and through this intersection, and I've created two angles, so this angle right here, so this angle is congruent to that angle, which are corresponding angles, and if you have congruent corresponding angles, that means that these lines have to be parallel. So that is the construction. We're going to do one more just to practice it. Um, and remember what I said, you could pick any angle down here and copy one that's congruent up top so that you form those parallel lines. So you can copy congruent alternate interior angles, or you could um, copy this and do alternate exterior angles, but I think the corresponding are just the easiest to see and to copy, which is why we choose those ones. So for example two, same idea, just another practice. We're going to draw a line that's parallel to M that passes through point A. So your first step, get your transversal. Remember your transversal can be any at any angle, so up to you. So I could have done it this way if I wanted. I could have done it um, so it looks kind of perpendicular to M. 
However you want to do it, it doesn't make a difference as long as you get those congruent corresponding angles. So now I'm focused on getting the congruent corresponding angles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this one and then copy it up top here. So you could have chose this angle over here and then copy it right here. It doesn't make a difference as long as you have congruent corresponding angles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my arc. This is where I'm going to measure the opening from. Remember this arc um, length doesn't really matter, the measurement when you open your compass. And then once I get that, now I need to measure the whole reason why we draw that arc is so that we can measure the opening of this angle because I'm copying the angle. So I go ahead and I measure the opening using the arc. Do the same thing over here. Remember the metal point has to be on the transversal because it has to be on an intersection. You can't just put it anywhere over here. It defeats the purpose of using a compass. So now that I have my intersection, I can go ahead and draw my line that goes through point A and through that intersection, and it will be parallel. So let me just slide that line down. That line is parallel to line M because I've just created congruent corresponding angles. So these angles right here are congruent and they're corresponding, which implies that those lines have to be parallel. So go ahead and try the check your understanding problems and we will continue working with parallel lines and copying angles in class.